performers appear. Would you like to join us closer to the stage? Thank you. Going to be on later <laughs> in the bars. Um, I was really interested in the claims you were making at the end about that you are happy to believe that you've been entirely replaced already. Um, doesn't it, I mean, I realize that since you're a powerful person, you have a lot of content uh, IP lawyers that can make sure that, that you get the property back. But um, there was a study that uh, some people at MIT did that indicated that when you use this, you get sort of the whole world leveling up to around 70 or 80 percentile. Uh, not necessarily all the way to the top. Um, wouldn't that mean it would be harder to be the kind of outlier you are, you know, the one who's really gone viral? I mean, if, if everyone can have a thought, I, I, my, my blog posts don't get seen by millions of people personally, so I don't know. Yeah, so a uh, great question, and uh, this is what we, we, we thought of too. So if everyone has access to this technology, then, uh, uh, you know, how are you going to stand out? And, and that will be a completely different game. Right, so uh, you're going to have to figure out what you have to do and which prompts you'll have to uh, inject to get the best output. And we've seen that um, uh, internal testing, we've, we've shared this tool with a bunch of people and uh, some people are way better at it than others. And this to us already shows that, you know, regardless if, if I can give you a hammer and I can give someone else a hammer here, I can, you know, there will be a difference in, uh, in the quality of uh, uh, work that you create. And that's how I see this too. Uh, so it will be much more about who has the best ideas, uh, who is uh, ready to uh, iterate as quickly as possible, and um, who might find some other secret sauce in this new system. So, so, so kind of like it is now, just the other stuff. Nothing changes. <laughs> Looking forward to being on stage with you shortly, John. Thank you for that question. You describe the sort of artistic collaboration, let's say, between the human and the AI. And I had to think when you said the Spanish example, so for example, it's like Holly AI, a singer who AI her voice to offer it to different singing styles that she usually would have. So we're seeing more and more of these sort of creative collaborations come up, and I think that's really cool. And, and yet when you said six months till photorealism, and I had to think of the writers and the actor strike going on in the US and the fear of replacement there, like what would be perhaps from a perspective of a creative core to industry? Yeah, so I, I thought of the writer strike and I, I thought, okay, well, yes, we can all protest uh, you know, we, we can protest generative AI or we can start embracing it because all of a sudden, where does all the inspiration and the creativity come from? From these writers. So you give these writers one of these tools that makes an entire video and you say, you're the writer, put your entire script in there and, and, and start working with it like that. Now all of a sudden you don't need camera equipment, you don't need expensive editors, you don't need expensive actors because you can fill this up with generative AI. Or if you are the actor, you can fill up the rest. So it starts leveling out the playing field and makes it much more accessible for everyone to do some extremely high budget and high level uh, storytelling. So I think we will have an happy ending. That sounds great. What a fantastic note to end on. A big round of applause for you, Jordi. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Um, so I'm moving over this way because it's time for our next panel session and I get